course when I start recording is when all the shenanigans happen. <laughs> hey Cupcakes, welcome back to my channel. This is not what I was planning on recording today. I wanted to record a September wrap up, but my camera said no. I need to get the nanny for a video that I'm, or a video series that I'm planning on doing. For some reason, I thought that I already bought it. And apparently, I don't own it. Or I can't find it. I don't know. I thought while I was going to go to Barnes to get that, I'm going to see what else I can find. And then when we get home, I'm going to actually show you all some of the book mail that we got. Because um, we have been sent some from some amazing publishers. If you're excited on this journey and you can't wait to see what we can find, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know if you've bought any books or if there's any like recent releases or any releases that are coming up that you're excited about. And let's go ahead and see what we can find. Everything to get no fasting. I don't care what you knew me in the past tense. I ain't no drill looking style. This ain't no last dance. Way past it. Way. Get on my ex, cause he validate me. You never check, I don't want no receipt. I ain't get possessed, let my space speak freely. Hey, my past can't escape me. My pussy precedes me. Why am I all the time change? I'm still playing the victim, and you still playing the pick me. It's so embarrassing. All of the things. Did we spend too much money? Yes. Did we get what we came for? Kind of. <laughs> Are you way too close to me? Yes, but we're not worried about that. Getting five books. Um, all already like on my radar, kinda sorta. Um, <laughs> and some unnecessary purchases, but expected when you go into a bookstore. Obviously, we did get the nanny. I could have swore to you that I had already bought this, but I can't find it. So, I got it. Um, I want to do it for a series that you all will hear about later on. So, I'm pretty excited about this. We have The Housemaid at Home. It's actually on my October TBR. So, I went ahead and picked this up because I keep hearing great things about this too. So, I'm like, if I enjoy the first one, might as well go ahead and get the second one. Also got... In my dreams, I hold a knife by Ashley Winston. I actually just read The Boyfriend Candidate. I really enjoyed it. And while this is like different, um, I want to try some more books from her because that one was really, really cute. And I know this is a completely different realm. However, I was excited and I keep hearing good things about it. So I was like, why not check out another one of her books if I enjoyed the one that I just listened to? So pretty excited about this three books that are in a series that i haven't completed or read yet or whatever so i have no business getting these books but who cares came for hunting adeline i keep hearing that this one is just as good as the first one i mean she thick but she might be a good time wanted to get this because the last time that 
Um, I tried to get Haunting Adeline in Barnes. I could not find it. I had to order it off of Amazon. Um, so when I saw that they had this, I just went ahead and picked it up so that when I, like, if I really enjoy that book and I want to read this one, I already have it so I don't have to search for it. And I'm probably going to read that book for October because, like, dark romances, thrillers, you know, all in the same realm. So, pretty excited about that. And look at this cover. I mean, what could get more spookier than this? Actually, the fifth book in a series, The Hot House Flower, which is part of the Addicted series. I love this series. I'm very fortunate to be able to work with Berkeley. Um, so they have sent me a majority of this series. I think I've bought two out of the series. And because I'm so fortunate, I don't really care if I'm spending money to support this author when, you know, I've gotten a majority of her books for free. I've read the first one and the second one. Um, this one, for some reason, I didn't get it from Berkeley because I think I chose something other. Something happened. Whatever. Either way, I got it now. And so I'm excited to complete the collection that has come out. Because, um, they've redone the cover. So slowly they're starting to trickle out. So now I'm back on track and I have all of them that have come out. So excited to keep going with this series. Um, but I do think we're going to keep going and go to Target and see what we can find there. Might as well just like, you know, complete the full circle. Like, used bookstore, Barnes, Target, all in the same realm. So. If you hear the AC, I'm sorry, but I'm hot. <laughs> Two books from Target. This is A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. Um, I've been wanting to check this book out, so I'm really excited. I just didn't get the chance. Now I did. And then Only Love Can Hurt Like This by Paige Toon. So when Ren realizes her fiance is in love with someone else, she thinks her heart will never recover. On on the other side of the world, Anders lost his wife four years ago and is still struggling to move on. So these two caught my eye. Um, this one, I know there's a sequel coming out at some point. And it says, one boy, one girl, a bond that is forged in an instant and cherished for a decade, a bond that neither time nor distance can break, a bond that will last forever or so they believe. So, two cute little romances, eh, add them to the pile. And I think I'm done um, with in-person purchases for books for the year. I have a few that I need to get on Amazon because they are indie romances, dark romances, whatever, um, that I can only get specifically from Amazon, I believe. Go home, refresh, eat a snack or whatever, and then show you all my book mail. So let's go. All right, y'all, we're back home and I want to show you some of the book mail that I've received this month. This is from publisher, so Thank you all so, so much. I'm so appreciative. And let's go ahead and get into this book mail. First up, we have two books from Bloom. So thank you so much, Bloom, for sending me these. I actually, so my Barnes & Nobles, and I love it, puts out, I don't know if they do this on purpose. I think that they do because it happens all the time, which is why I go there all the time. They usually put it out like way in advance not way in advance but in advance so when i was in barnes noble today i actually saw these <laughs> in person um so we have mia sheridan's uh becoming colder and then finding eden first of all these covers are beautiful so this is her new duology and they're releasing together so that's really cool because you don't have to wait to you know read the other book like you can just buy them at the same time or you can go get it both of these books actually come on sale on october 3rd <laughs> let me tell you something october 3rd is a good date because this book comes out then and then oh my gosh what is that book i i pre-ordered it y'all know what i'm talking about from the icebreaker author i'm gonna put it over here <laughs> that also releases october 3rd and i don't even need to tell y'all 
what else about October 3rd, but if you're a Mean Girls fan, you already know. So this first book in the New York Times bestselling author, Mia Sheridan's Acadia Duology? Acadia Duology, Jesus. <laughs> Um, a dark, compelling, forbidden love. Friends to lovers romance set in a remote religious community. And then it says, read cult. <laughs> now you got my attention, honey. Bloom doesn't miss. Let me tell you something. All right. Um, where the main characters are truly star-crossed lovers living in a world where their innocent love is absolutely forbidden and breaks every c covenant. There is a place in today's America with no electricity, no plumbing, and no modern conveniences, unless you're the council of leadership. In this place for the layman, there is no room for dreams, no space for self-expression, and no tolerance for ambition. In the community of in the community of Acadia lives a boy named Calder. With the body of a god and the heart of a warrior, he serves his family with faith and honor, but he dares to dream more. He has the soul of a leader and desires to be more than a mere water bearer, and he is desperate to learn of, of the limitless world beyond their cloistered community's borders. Okay, I'm here for it. Now, this one, Finding Eden, Again, it comes out at the same time, and they were right beside each other when I went into Barnes. So, check out your local Barnes because, I mean, October 3rd is literally next month. Next week. <laughs> I said next month. I mean, it is next month. You know what I'm talking about. I said get together in this book, and then this is after they get together. I don't want to spoil it for you all, though. But it says, Kohler and Eden were never meant to be friends, certainly never meant to fall in love. After all... Eden is betrothed to be Arcadia's leader, secluded until the day of her destiny. But as she and Calder steal fleeting moments and forbidden kisses, their hearts grow dangerously tangled and it's too late to heed their warnings. So thank you so much, Bloom, for sending me these. I actually picked up another one of Mia's books. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. I've bought too many books. Either way, I have purchased a few of this author's books already, so I'm excited. I have never read anything by her, but I keep hearing great things. Um, so let me know what you think about this author and if you're thinking about picking up these books as well. We have a book from St. Martin's, and it's called Maybe Once, Maybe Twice by Allison Rose Greenberg. And this cover is so pretty. It's definitely giving summer vibes, possibly fall. And it says, true love deserves a second chance. So that kind of gives you an idea of what it is. It's a romance, second chance romance. You know the old saying, if you're still single when you're 35, we should get married. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> well, Maggie Vine made that vow with two different people at two different very stages of her life. Uh, and they both showed up. <laughs> what are the odds of that? <laughs> Maggie said, I got choices. Two different people at two different stages of her life, and they both showed up. Maggie's life is going extra media. At 35, she's pursuing her dreams of being both a singer and a mother, though neither is panning out successfully. Huh, okay. So when Garrett stifled hedge fund manager by day, but electrifying aspiring rock singer by night, comes to her 35th birthday party with the intention to kiss Maggie senseless, it feels like one piece might click into place. Except he's engaged to someone else and Maggie knows she won't fit into the cookie cutter life he's built. He's building for himself. Hold on, Maggie. <laughs> you sound like you had your ish together, but clearly not. Enter Asher Rays, Maggie's first boyfriend from summer camp, who's now a heartthrob actor. Okay. Maggie likes people with money, apparently, and she knows how to pick them. Um, Asher lived a successful life, yet private ever since he got famous. When a career-changing opportunity is presented to Maggie after his, her reconnection with Asher, it feels like everything, music, love, family will fall into place, but her past won't let her move on without a fight. Wow, that sounds really good, actually. And guess when this one's coming out? October 3rd. Like, <laughs> October 3rd, people are going to be spending bank. All right, so my next one is The Search for Us, and it was sent to me from Wednesday Books. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Wednesday Books, for sending me this. It's so cute, and it's by Susan Boyer. 
And it says, two have siblings who have never embarked on a search together for their new Im immigrant and U.S. Army veteran father that they never knew. Samira will do anything to keep her fractured family from falling apart, including caring for her widowed grandmother and getting her older brother into recovery for alcohol addiction. With attendance at her dream college on the line, she takes a, a long-shot DNA test to find the support she desperately needs from her father she hasn't seen since she was a baby. And then there's Henry Owen is torn between his well-meaning but unreliable bio biological mom and his overly strict aunt and uncle who stepped in to raise him but don't seem to see him for who he is. Looking to forge a stronger connection to his own identity, he takes a DNA test to find the one person who might love him for exactly who he is, the biological father he never knew. Instead of a DNA t match with their father, they match with each other. Then they begin to search for their father together and slowly unravel the difficult truth of their shared past. Wow. This might be a heavy read. Uh, I don't know if I can handle this for October, but this is definitely on my list. That's a very interesting plot. So thank you, Wednesday, for sending me this book. All right. So the last St. Martin's was from St. Martin's Romance. So we do have another book from St. Martin's Press, which is called Someone Somewhere Maybe. And this is Poems. And this cover is so cute. And it just has little poems in it. Um, a few illustrations. Very simple, cute read. It's so cool. I want to actually read more poetry. Um, I love little, cute little short reads like this. I mean, you could read like a poem a day, anything like that. Um, and apparently this is already out. So readers on a journey through first love, first heartbreak, first loss, like all these things that this author has gone through. Um, and each poem reveals something new about human condition and brilliantly captures what growing up feels like in a way both relatable and affirming. So I'm actually going to read this and see if maybe this is something I could share with my students um, since it says something about growing up and I do work with high schoolers. So thank you, St. Martin's. Like, this is a really cool read. I'm really intrigued to see like what these poems are about. All right, so next up we have two... Although they kind of go together, like, I'm just going to do them separately. Um, I have two from Forever. So, Forever actually sent me Twisted Secrets by Katie Robert. And I'm just, like, staring at this cover because, like, her covers are always, like, really pretty and dark. Um, I've read, as many of you know, I've read plenty of Katie Robert books. Um, so, she actually... Like, I think she went, like, really viral on TikTok or something. I don't know, but somehow I ran across her books, and I really enjoyed them. I didn't really think they would be my kind, so when I saw this in the mail, I was so excited. Um, so this one says, greed, ambition, violence. Those are the lessons that Olivia learned from her mafia family. She's determined that her young daughter won't grow up that way, or that same way. When she meets Cillian, she recognizes he could easily drag her into the life she's determined to leave behind, yet she can't help herself from falling for the smoldering, tortured man. Plagued by a violent past, he is more vulnerable than anyone realizes, but Olivia sees through him in a way that no one else can, and their sizzling chemistry awakens something he thought he'd never experience again. While his proposal of no strings sex seems simple, what he feels for her isn't and he knows there's no escape from his from this life but for olivia he'll do everything in his power to try even if it costs him his life <laughs> ah! this might be an october read y'all because that that thing's on fire so i'm excited about this and i don't know when does this come out I, when I was at Barnes and Noble, I actually saw it. So this is already out. It came out in September. I was going to say, I saw it on the table, but because my Barnes and Noble always puts things out, you never know. So this is already out. It sounds so good. I can't wait to read that. Next up, also from Forever, we have a Christmas read, which I'm so excited. I already got my Christmas books out. Um, so this says Snowed In for Christmas. Um, and this is from Jacqueline Snow. 
And it says, sorority mom Becca Fairfield is used to guys not taking her seriously. She's too blonde, too quirky, or just too much. <laughs> so she's ditch dating to focus on her job. She's in a major blizzard on her doorstep. Becca has everything she needs to survive the next two weeks on her own. Hot chocolate, plenty of books. This is what I want my winter to be like, by the way, as a teacher. Like, bring on all the snow. I got plenty of books. Just bring the snow. Um, and the memory of a steamy kiss with a certain sexy grumposaurus football coach to keep her warm. Okay, is it, is it giving sports romance? Only Becca seriously underestimating the storm. Uh, so when the power goes out and Harrison Cooper, football coach, master crank, and the guy who acted mega awkward after the steamy kiss offers her shelter, it only makes her sense to accept. Okay, so we have grumpy sunshine possibly. We have a little bit of sports mix. And we have a close proximity of romance. So that sounds good. Uh, these two, like I'm interested in all of these, but these two are sounding really, really good. So thank you so much forever for sending me those. And more from Berkeley. So kind of same concept, same people. We're from Berkeley. So this one, I'm obsessed with the color of this cover. It kind of matches my shirt a little bit. It's Laura Griffin, The Last Close Call. And it says, genetic genealogist Rowan has made a name for herself by working with investigators to trace the family trees of violent criminals who have eluded justice for years. But the, pres but the pressure of police cases have left her burned out and she shifted her focus to help adoptees find their biological parents. <laughs> Very similar to the book that we kind of just read or it's in the same like realm ish austin detective jack burner had bruner has spent his career successfully tracking down vicious criminals with notable exception of west campus racist a meticulous offender in texas who has never been identified when the latest two victims come to light jack sees that his targets violent behavior is escalating and with and only with Rowan's assistance does he stand a chance of cracking the case. Wow, that sounds very interesting. I like that. And last but not least, we have, I believe this is the sequel. Um, oops, I don't know when this book comes out. It says, and this is a romance suspense book. October 23rd, or sorry, October 2023. So all of these are basically October uh, releases. And this one I believe is as well. And it's Iris doesn't, Iris Kelly doesn't date, but it's in the same realm as Delilah Green doesn't care, Astro Parker doesn't fail. And this is the third one. This one also comes out in October and really cute cover. All the covers kind of have this, uh, two styles with the girls on the front and this one is a fake relationship after a horrible one night stand so you have fake dating you have one night stands probably pros pros <laughs> close proximity yeah i can't talk um everyone around iris kelly is in love her best friends are all co coupled up her siblings have perfect partners and her parents are still blissfully married and she's happy for all of them truly but iris doesn't want any of that dating love or romance she'll stick to her commitment free hookups thank you very much except no one in her life will just let her be oh she's just popping people want to be around her want to be near her and then perfectly happy to ignore all of her problems as usual iris goes into a bar in portland and meets a sec a sexy stranger stefania or stefania and a night of dancing and making out turns into the worst one night stand Iris has ever had. Wow. This sounds really, really good. So thank you, Berkeley, for sending me these two books. Really, you sent me four, but you know what I mean. But yeah, y'all, this was not what I planned on filming today, but we have so many amazing books and I'm so, so excited for these next few uh, months. Um, I did order some on Amazon, so when those come in, I will let you know, but I love you all so, so much. The support on here has been crazy so far. Thank you all for checking out my latest video. Make sure you check out my other videos, my shorts, leave comments. Let me know what you're excited to read for this upcoming fall, if you're going to buy any new books, or you're going to be on a book band like me. I think I should be done till like January. I've spent way too much money on books, but there's so many great releases. So 
I will actually see you all soon. I have a few videos planned and I'm excited to read this fall. So thank you. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for my next video. Bye.